Ei, pra quê? What's going on everyone? So welcome to my latest video. This is obviously my catch up video for the month of March 2022. This is obviously where I'm going over films that I saw both on streaming and in theaters for the month of March 2022, beginning from March 1st and ending on March 31st. Now, obviously keep in mind, if you want my in-depth thoughts for all of these movies, you guys can check out my letterbox. If you guys aren't on letterbox, please, please get a letterbox account. It's awesome for both movie buffs, movie critics, and just casual moviegoers alike. Um, I have reviews for all these movies not spoilerish because again, I don't like spoilers, but if you do want more in-depth thoughts, you guys can check that out down below. Here, I will just be talking about real quickly my thoughts on each movie that I saw starting from March 1st and ending March 31st. Now, again, I will also be giving the ratings for these movies, but again, thank you very much for watching guys. And uh, with all the exposition aside, let's get started. So kicking things off, we have The Batman. So The Batman was one of my most anticipated films of 2022, and I gotta say, this was a really good film. I quite liked it. Robert Pattinson killed it. I really liked the dark lighting. The cinematography was just drenched in all this dark lighting, and the score, holy cow, was really good. Also worth noting that I think the makeup was exceptional, especially on Penguin. Like, Definitely will probably get an Oscar nomination. I am predicting it right now. We'll get an Oscar nomination for makeup, and might win. We'll see. Now, the only thing with this movie is that I like the fact that it took a lot of influences from like Chinatown, obviously Manchurian Candidate, and Seven. But I will say that towards the end, it did feel as though there were like five different endings. Wasn't a fan of that, and I feel like that really hampered the movie as a whole. But besides that, the three hours really were something I was engaged for 100%. And The Batman, I personally will say, despite it not being perfect, it's still a really good film. That's why I'll be giving it a... So yeah, next up we have Turning Red, which is on Disney+. Plus. It is the latest Pixar Disney film. Wasn't really looking forward to this movie, truth be told. Um, I, I didn't know anything about it going into, which is definitely something that most of these movies applies to because I, I try to go into movies knowing as little as possible. But Turning Red was a movie that I got to say, going into it knowing as little as possible is the way to go because I was quite surprised at the themes and messages and how honestly very intimate this movie was in those regards. Um, it's definitely a movie that feels like it's pushing the PG rating in terms of parents feeling comfortable, especially with the audience that Disney has kind of established. I feel like this is going to be a movie that's going to be kind of mixed among parents. But for me personally, as someone that's probably going to be a parent within five, six years, I can definitely see myself showing my kids this movie because I think it's definitely a movie that it brings up stuff that honestly should be talked about. But I feel like so many people are kind of scared to talk about. But this movie discusses it in a way that is honestly both fantastical, but also comedic in nature. And I got to say, this movie felt very fresh. It's not amazing by no means, but it is a movie that's rock solid. And I personally will be giving Turning Red a So yeah, um, next up we have The Atom Project. Um, this was a movie on Netflix. It's a Netflix original, and um, it, it's it's very, very middle of the road. It's a very safe movie. Ryan Reynolds is a lot of fun to watch. Um, the chemistry between the two lead actors is okay for sure. But again, you've seen this movie a thousand times before. It's a movie that you watch it, you say, hey, that was enjoyable. And the next day someone asks you, oh, did you see a movie? And you're like... I think so. Then you go on Letterbox and you're like, oh yeah, I, I saw a movie. That's that's the Adam Project. Um, it's again, it's a safe movie. It's not a movie that you'll find yourself watching and saying, oh, that was a terrible movie. But you're also not going to say this is the next Citizen Kane. Um, so I, I, the Adam Project, I again don't remember much about it. I will be giving it a. So next up, we have The Outfit. This was a movie that I got to say, I was I was glad that I saw Blacklight with Liam Neeson because if I hadn't, I probably wouldn't have had this movie on my radar. Um, I saw the trailer for this movie, actually. Ironically, one of the few movies I've actually seen a trailer to as of late. I saw the trailer and I immediately said, okay, it's Mark Rylance in a, show, in a, a movie that's about him as like, you know, someone that's witnessing all of these like gangster related things. 
okay, I'm sold. That's all I need to know going into it. And um, it's a really good movie, I, I gotta say. I can definitely see myself revisiting this movie down the line because there's so many twists and turns and um, I wanna actually rewatch it to see if those twists and turns hold up. But upon first viewing, I was in on all those twists and turns. I, I did not expect a lot of them because the movie keeps you guessing. It's definitely old fashioned in that regards. It's more newer in terms of that it is violent for sure in some aspects, but it's definitely a movie that for sure can bring old audiences and new audiences alike together. And although, again, it's not an IP product, I do think that this movie could find an audience. I hope it does because it is actually quite good. And that's why the outfit I personally will be giving a... So yeah, um, next up we have Uma, which is a movie that I... I had no clue what this movie even was, to be honest. I saw it was PG-13. I saw it was a horror film. So I said, eh, why not? Give it a shot. And uh, honestly, I wish that I, I didn't see it because it's it's quite bad. Um, it's it's a film that feels like it came out in the early 2000s in regards to those uh, mainstream horror films where it just it's just, it's not good. It doesn't have a compelling story. The acting is okay, I suppose. Uh, the world building is very shaky at best. The jump scares allude me to where I don't understand why we're still doing jump scares when a lot of directors just don't really know how to utilize them correctly. Um, this is a movie that everything wrong with horror movies, this is a prime example of that. And Uma, personally, I, I will be giving a... So yeah, next up we have, speaking of horror films, we have the opposite end of the spectrum. We have X. It's an A24 film that happened to be a movie that was one of my most anticipated of 2022, simply because it's A24 and it's a horror film. Also, the premise of making a pornographic film, I mean, come on. Like, that's a combination that's tailor-made for me. And I gotta say, X was something that, it lived up to that. I didn't know anything about this movie going into. I do have some friends that went into this movie having seen the trailer, and they were kind of disappointed by it. And I'm glad that I didn't watch the trailer, and I still haven't, because there are so many things about this movie that just kind of have a little twist and turn here and there, but also the filmmaking is just so, so good. And I think it's a movie that will leave audiences with rewarding factors going into, you know, multiple rewatches with all the things that occur, all the symbolism, all the foreshadowing. It's really good stuff, man. I, I loved X personally, and I can't wait to watch it again on Blu-ray because, of course, A24 doesn't really do 4K, so I'm going to have to pick it up on Blu-ray. But still, X I would highly recommend, and I'll be giving a... So yeah, next up uh, we have Fresh, which is a Hulu movie. Um, Fresh is a solid movie. Um, it's a movie that starts out as one thing and then as it progresses, it turns into a different genre completely. And I was all aboard that, honestly. I, I think that it was quite well done. Um, I was quite engaged throughout the movie. Sebastian Stan in particular did a great job. And it's a movie that makes you think, if not for like a long time, but it makes you think while watching. And by the end, you're just, you're on board with the main character and all that she has to go through. Um, not perfect by any means, but still a rock solid movie. And as a genre fan, it's really good. And I will be giving Fresh A. So yeah, next up we have, speaking of Hulu, we have Deep Water, which is a movie that stars Anna de Armas and Ben Affleck. And I believe it was actually originally supposed to go uh, in theaters, but it didn't, unfortunately. Uh, or maybe fortunately, I don't know. Um... I feel like this movie has all the ingredients of being a good movie. It's got two very attractive actors. It's got a director that did Fatal Attraction, which was a pretty good movie from what I remember all those years ago. But it does, doesn't really gel together, unfortunately. There are some elements that I quite liked. Like I like the fact that a marriage was depicted that wasn't your typical heterosexual marriage. Um, but I feel like a movie that dives a bit deeper would have been more helpful because I feel like this movie towards the end tried to be Gone Girl, but it fell flat because it just didn't really dive further into that whole, it's not your traditional heterosexual uh, marriage. So it's, it's a movie that is dealing with extramarital affairs and everything. And then possibly someone else being involved with uh, killing. I mean, again, no spoilers or anything, but I just feel like given the material, it could have been so much more, but alas, it's a movie that Honestly, in terms of thematically speaking, it's a movie that has something to say, but it might elude many viewers. And for myself, despite picking up on it, 
it was something that I appreciated, but only very, very, very slightly. Um, but honestly, deep water, it's not that deep, and I will be giving deep water a. So yeah, next up, uh, speaking of not deep, we have The Lost City, which is in theaters. Um, this movie was diverting. Uh, Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum are great together. Brad Pitt's also great in the movie. Um, he he has a scene that he's introduced, and I absolutely love the fact that the True Detective theme song was uh, playing while we were introduced to him. I, I don't know. I thought it was pretty funny. But um, besides that, I don't really remember much about this movie other than it's like an Indiana Jones knockoff. Um, but it's much better than Uncharted. I, I would say if you had to pick between these two movies, The Lost City or Uncharted, I would definitely say watch The Lost City. But it's still a movie that, again, you're not really going to remember much about it. It's a fine movie if you watch it. It's a movie that you'll be engaged, but it's not a movie you're going to remember 10 minutes after watching it. And The Lost City, for me personally, I will be giving a... So yeah, and then finally, The uh, Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. I saw, I got an extra early screening. I saw it March 30th. Um, it comes out technically April 22nd, so seeing it early was very nice. This was a movie I actually did a review on. You guys can check that out on my channel. Uh, but this movie I thought was entertaining. I liked Nicolas Cage. I liked what they did with him and Pedro Pascal. They had great chemistry together. Like the references to Paddington 2, I thought they were clever. Um, it's a movie that, it's lightweight for sure, but um, it's... Definitely enjoyable, and I did crack up quite a bit. Um, but again, if you want further in thoughts, you can check out my letterbox review or my full review, obviously, on my channel. But uh, yeah, you know, as far as the unbearable weight of massive talent, I will be giving it a. But yeah, guys, those are my thoughts on all 11 movies that I saw this month for the month of March. Let me know your thoughts, guys, on these movies, as well as what movies you saw in March of 2022 that came out in said month. Let me know down below. And as always, don't forget the subscription, notification bell, and I'll uh, catch you guys later.